Science Beetle. All right, so welcome back. And what you see here on the screen is the compiler that I'm going to be using. It's an online compiler that you can use free of charge. There is no expense for it. And I strongly recommend that you use it largely because uh, you don't have to install anything on your computer. There is no downloading of any software. There's no installation. There's no program issues, whether you're using a Mac or a PC. This compiler runs online uh, entirely. There, there, there is no installation whatsoever for you. So there's a couple of items that you should know about this compiler. So when you actually go online and uh, you go into the uh, program iz.com, I'll go ahead and link the, the, the link in the description for you. So what you want to do is you want to go to the website. So what I've done here is let's go ahead and go to uh, program iz.com. You'll go to this website here. This is the way you go for it uh, and do it. So what you want to go ahead and do is you want to go ahead and program, just select the one you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and select the one at the bottom. So when you come up here, you've got some options here and we are going to go ahead and click learn and we are going to do the online compiler here at the very top. So click on online compiler and it will launch the compiler. Now I already had a window open there at the very beginning, but what you want to pay attention here is that there are a number of compilers that can be used all along the left hand side here. The one we're currently on is on the uh, Python compiler, but you can actually come in here and if you click on any one of these, uh, buttons here at the bottom, the first one you're going to run into is the C compiler. So when you click on that button there, it will actually uh, launch the C compiler and you can see the, the title of that compiler here at the very top right corner of the browser window. And if you keep on going down the line here, you're going to see that you're going to get a compiler for the C++. The next one is Java and the next one is C Sharp and then the last one here at the bottom is JavaScript. Now I've already opened a number of these windows already before. I'm just going to go ahead and close a couple of these. We don't need them all. And so those are the compilers there. And then once you've got them, you can always navigate between them as, as you can see here. But the focus of our particular video today is the video on Python. So we're going to stay in this area here. Now, the one thing I will do now, uh, if you uh, give me a moment here, I'm just going to go ahead and resize the window so that we can only show on the screen the code. Because when you're coding, you don't want to be distracted by other stuff. I don't want to distract you in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, resize my screen here so that I can only show the code so that uh, we can focus on that. Uh, and then we'll actually, I'll leave the, the little title there for you as well. So I'll move this up a little bit and then bring this down. And you should be able to see a big chunk of the uh, window here on the compiler for, for you on the screen. Now, taking a look at the uh, compiler here, we notice that the, there's some layouts here. So what we're going to do is kind of go through the layout. On the left hand side, the section here is known as uh, main pi. And you'll see that there's already some code here with some numbers, one, two, three. Those are the line numbers for the code. And there's already a code here that's entered called print parentheses and then inside hello world. So this is the default uh, code that's always put in in a lot of these browsers. It's always the, the hello world uh, program or command line for you. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and delete that in a second. And uh, let's go and look at our right side. On the right side, you see the shell. Now the shell gives you one button at the very far right and it says clear. So whenever we run some code, uh, we can actually see it output it to the shell. If you're running an IDE on your computer, if you've already installed an IDE, that would be an integrated development environment. So the, the focus of this video is not to go through and, and talk about the various IDEs, but if you want to use something that you can download and install, you can definitely do that. There's a whole bunch of them out there like Sublime Text. There is PyCharm and others. If you want to use a text editor, you can always use one of those. I use uh, VS Code. Microsoft VS Code. I also use Atom as a way of programming and brackets. Those are all three that I actually use on a regular basis. But here, since we don't have to install anything, we're going to use the compiler online. And when you run the code, you're going to run it by pressing the button up at the very top. Uh, that run button, when you click that, it will actually run the code. And so let's go ahead and run it so we can see what the default code is going to run. So when you click it, it uh, prints out hello world to the shell. So if you're running that IDE or that text editor on your computer, that shell area is the equivalent of your console. 
So whenever you run the code, the, the program compiler is going to compile that, interpret the code, execute what you want it to do, and then it will output to you on the console, or in our case, the shell, the results of that program. So what you want to go ahead and do is run the code uh, and see if there's any errors, and then you can always uh, solve for errors by going uh, forward and looking at the code a little bit more in detail, and then fixing any errors that need to be fixed. And so we'll look at co comments in the next video, and hopefully you can join me there.